Hi, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our PNC WA Summit Series, the sixth one, which is on women of water. So um, we're really excited that you're all here today. And we have an amazing group of presenters that we want to share with you. I'm personally really excited about this. Um, I've been involved in PNC PNCWA for a handful of years. Um, I am a VP of the board, and I know that our subcommittee has worked really hard to pull this together for you today. So I'm Laura Kamrick. I am a senior project manager with Corolla Engineers in Seattle. I am, um, like I mentioned, also part of the board. And I have been the chair of the Women of Water Committee for the last handful of years, which is part of the leadership committee. So I'd like to introduce and thank our great team that has helped put this together. This committee was actually working on an event that we were hoping to host in the fall of 2020 at Seattle University, where we wanted to share our passion for water with new scientists and engineers at Seattle U. But COVID kind of threw us a pivot and we weren't able to launch that. So we were really excited that we could join and be the sixth of the summit series. So this committee um, is all going to be helping today by introducing and moderating leading panels and hosting our Q&A and networking events at the end. So with that, I'd really like to thank Haley Faulkner, Amy Damerall, Robin Kirschbaum, Corinne DeLeon, Brittany Birch, Kara Peck, Eric Schuyler, or Erica Schuyler, Prestista Kenansar, Kelsey Hugh, Kimberly Kelsey, and Lish Moreau. Without these amazing women, we would not be here today. So let's give them um, just a small round of applause because we have the largest summit series we've ever had. Just moments ago, I got a small note that there are 167 of us celebrating water on this summit today. So thank you all for taking the time to join us and be here this morning. So um, I would also like to thank, in addition to our subcommittee, I would like to thank all of our gold sponsors. These are great sponsors such as Brown and Caldwell, Corolla Engineers, Jacobs, West Yost, Leeway Engineering Services, Sladen, HDR, Tetra Tech, Kennedy Jenks, and our silver sponsors, Parametrics, Murray Smith, Stantec, Aqua Efficiency, and the Vaughn Company. Amazing to have all of your support throughout our summit series and for this Women of Water Summit. Okay, so a few housekeeping items to share with you this morning. So we are going to have um, a CEU polls, which will pop up during the session for those of you that joined before. So make sure you answer the question. Um, so that you so we can track your participation because this summit is worth 0.2 CEUs if you participate for the whole event. Um, additionally, we'd love it if you could tweet your comments during the event um, to our PNCW org um, site and this way that they'll show up on Twitter and into our platform feed. So we are going to have a handful of speakers this morning and we've allowed like a little short three to five minute break between each of them. What that allow you to do is move over to the navigation bar on the left side and allow you to select to the next session and maybe stretch and have a little bit of a break and move your legs a little bit. So um, at the end of our session today, we have set up three breakout rooms where we're gonna be able to do um, networking and Q&A. In these three breakout rooms, you'll see a Zoom link at the end of the event, which you can select to meet and chat with Stephanie Sm um, Smith, our first speaker, Nikki Pozos and Jesse Marin, our second speaker, and of course, our great panel. So we welcome you after the official end of our presentation to please join one of our networking rooms in the Zoom link and meet, the pan uh, meet our speakers and chat. So um, I think we're ready. So let's get started, everybody. We have um, a keynote speaker that we are so excited that could join us here today in the Pacific Northwest. I'd like to, um, I'm really pleased to introduce Lynn Broadus. Um, Lynn is the president of Broadview Collaborative, a platform for advancing sustainable and resilient practices in the water sector. She serves as a strategic advisor and facilitator for private, nonprofit, and philanthropic the philanthropic, well, that's a tough one without a cup of coffee, clients throughout North America. And she's known for bringing new ways of thinking to crucial environmental challenges in our day. She's recognized as a thought leader in our industry. 
for advancing concepts of a distributed water infrastructure, including her report from 2019 called Opportunities in Distributed Water Infrastructure. Her prior work includes leading the Johnson Foundation Environmental Program from 2008 to 2014. She conveyed hundreds of leaders in the US to address the water sustainability and resiliency under the umbrella of charting new waters. She's held roles with the Milwaukee Riverkeeper, the Nature Conservancy, and Nature Serve. She earned her PhD from Duke University, her MBA from the University of Wisconsin Milwaukee, and her bachelor's degree from, um, from University of Virginia in Environmental Sciences. We're really, really pleased to have Lynn join us today. Lynn is also the president for the Water Environmental um, Federation, WEF, and she has been the past chair of many other boards. Lynn's opening remarks to us today will share with us WEF's leadership and initiative for diversity. So thank you for, for having Lynn here this morning. All right, I think I'm there with you guys now. Laura, thank you for that introduction. Um, I'm sorry for putting words like philanthropic in there. It's pretty early for you guys. I'm, I'm in Central Time. Uh, based in Minneapolis, but I'm, I'm thrilled to be here with you. Uh, thank you also to that list of sponsors. That is quite a list. That is uh, really shows wonderful support. And I know it's appreciated both financially and um, just in terms of the team spirit. Thank you also to this tech team at Meet Green. Uh, you guys don't see them, but they are hard at work behind the scenes and, and uh, making sure this goes smoothly. And to all, what was that, 167 of you who are joining us today. And that is just, that is fantastic. That is really great. A, a great sign of the, the, the kinds of work and the kinds of enthusiasm out here in the Pacific Northwest. Now, I gotta say, I am no fan of the pandemic, but I love that we can all get together without getting on airplanes or booking hotel rooms. Uh, none of the sort of carbon footprint guilt that I normally have when getting together with my colleagues. And, um, and of course that means it's more affordable, which means it's more inclusive. And I love that. So and maybe that is part of the reason for your, your big numbers. I just think that's wonderful. And thank you for including me in your event today to celebrate and accelerate the role of women in the water sector. Um, I'm happy to say that from my vantage, you know, the sector is changing. Uh, the work is paying off and women are here to stay. Uh, and I, I have a couple slides I'd like to share with you. So if we can go ahead and pull up my slides and um, fairly rapidly go through the intro slide to my first real slide, if you will. Um, now, great, yeah, let's go to the next slide. All right, so to illustrate uh, what I mean when I say I think women are here to stay with a fairly parochial point, um, let's take a look at the WEF board up there on the right-hand side of your slide. This is a screen capture of the WEF board at its, um, at, obviously in a Zoom meeting this, this fall, and that is our official board photo. It will hang on the wall at WEF headquarters along with all the other annual sort of men and women in suits photos that that uh, going back decades through the years of um, WEF leadership. As you can pretty quickly see, the WEF board has a pretty good balance between men and women. And, it, and it's been that way for uh, my years on the WEF board, the, I think the six years now. Now, it hasn't always been that way, however. Uh, WEF was founded in 1928 and uh, it took 60 years before we had our first female board president. That was Beth Turner of Virginia. Uh, and then it was, um, she was elected in 1987. And then it took another 11 years before we had another uh, female board president. That was Rhonda Harris out of Texas. Uh, and then she, so then she was followed six years later by Lynn Gryalka um, in 2004. So you're kind of picking up this trend. It, it took 60 years for the first woman president, then uh, 11 years for the next and six years for the next. Now I made a sort of amateurish effort to illustrate this with the grid you see in the left part of your slide. The top left uh, corner represents the first president that was um, Charles Emerson, who by the way was president for 20 years, but I only gave him one rectangle. All the other rectangles equal one president. So the years kind of roll by from left to right and then down a row, left to right and so on. 
And you can see seven rows down, there's Beth Turner, the first woman that we had as uh, president. Then, you know, sort of two, two rows down and the 11 years later comes our, our next president, Rhonda Harris. And then the next row down, we see two women. So we're getting more frequent and the same with the row after that. And then you get to the most recent years, the, the last, uh, well, I, I projected forward to include Ifatayo Venner, who will be our president two years from now, and that's as far out as we know. And so in that six year time span, we will have had four women and two men presidents. Um, so that is, um, I, I think we're kind of making up for lost time. We women are making up for lost time in uh, this um, uh, West otherwise heavily male skewed environment. You know, the water sector as a whole skews heavily male and our, um, our uh, membership skews heavily male. But for whatever reasons that could be examined on another day at another time, we're doing pretty well in WEF leadership. And I think that's, that's here to say, to say. Now, one thing that isn't illustrated on this slide, but I think is important to mention is that the numbers lag behind for people of color as president of, of WEF. Our first uh, uh, person of color to chair the WEF board was Mohammed Dahab in 2006. And then it wasn't until 2012 that we had the next person and that would be um, Cordell Samuels. And then Ifatayo, when she uh, steps into that role will be the third person of color to, ch to chair our board and the first woman of color to chair our board. So um, uh, we, we still have a, a ways to go, but I, I feel like we have, um, uh, there, there's good reason for optimism. I'm not sure if other people's slides are, are flashing, um, but I, I, I'm not sure what that's about and I apologize for that. Uh, hopefully I'm the only one seeing it that way. Now let's move on uh, to the next slide, if you will. Uh, I want to point out, you know, there are, of course, lots of other ways for people to have important and impactful leadership roles besides being on the board or chairing the board. In this slide, I have some clips that I took out of the January 2020 uh, issue of WENT, the magazine, the bi-monthly magazine that all members get. And it had an, a feature article, Lessons from the Ebola Outbreak. The, um, and, and that article had a number of uh, things that are sort of represented in those other tables there that were important, um, it was just an important guidance for anybody who runs a water utility and works in the water sector for how to manage and how to protect your workers during a waterborne disease outbreak. Now, this was in January, 2020. And if you've ever published in WENT, you know that there's a long, there's generally a long lag time for getting something into the, the uh, journal. You have to submit it. This, this article was probably submitted in September or October of 2019, which means it was uh, on the calendar earlier in 2019 and probably being uh, heavily worked on during the summer of 2019. So I don't know about you, but I certainly wasn't thinking about pandemics in the summer of 2019. But we are very fortunate that we have a group of volunteers, of, of professionals who happen to volunteer for WEF and the WEF members. That's the WIDOC, the Waterborne, Infect the Waterborne Infectious Disease Outbreak Committee, which is, um, or, or water, Waterborne Infectious um, Disease and Outbreak Control Working Group, which is a part of WEF's Disinfection and Public Health Committee. Now, I show this is a woman's leadership at work. I show a picture here of Rasha Malbarad who, who chairs that working group. And it is the reason that they were so far out in front that uh, if we wanna go to the next slide, you know, her foresight and leadership at WEF put WEF at the forefront of this coronavirus uh, uh, work. So they were able to hit the ground running and get a, an article rushed into the uh, April issue of WENT, which had a real focus on coronavirus and I know was helpful to and reassuring to all of us. Along with that article, there were webinars and there was a blue ribbon task force created and all kinds of other material being at, developed kind of 
uh, as this crisis was unfolding to help us so that we could work together in addressing this crisis and ensuring that communities were protected and that they had, and that water workers were protected during this time of global crisis. That in turn paved the way for uh, WEF's partnership with Xylem, which is what allowed us to contra contract, contract with uh, Dr. Sanderson, who was our first um, uh, chief medical officer. He has been uh, invaluable to WEF and our members providing, you know, it's really, it's one thing to get expertise from somewhere else, but to have expertise from the inside that you can go to and that you trust and you have a relationship with has just been tremendous for the entire sector. Um, that uh, we also have some very exciting news, which I think I'm saying publicly for the first time, there, the press release is still in the works, but I've been given permission to, to say, to share with you that WEF is, um, has a new uh, agreement with the U.S. Centers for Disease Control, the CDC, where we will be its lead partner on providing training for wastewater-based epidemiology. And we are hoping that this opens up a path, not just around coronavirus, although that's certainly what's on our minds right now, but for a much broader partnership between wastewater and public health. And we're, we're very, very excited on this. And I'm just sort of wondering, you know, would, would this all be in place if Russia, you know, two years ago hadn't been leading that task force and really paving the way and setting the foundation for us to be so effective and um, be recognized as the leading experts on this. And I, uh, I just think that's that's wonderful. And it really speaks to the role that, that women have in all kinds of ways through WEF. Um, if I could have the next slide. You know, I've been focusing on women, I and mean, that is our topic today, but I want to say that you know, uh, diversity in all its forms is important to WEF and has been for some time. Uh, back in 2018, when we um, refreshed our goals, we very intentionally uh, put diversity, equity, and inclusion work into those goals that they hadn't been expressly uh, stated in there before. We created a task force to, uh, with our uh, membership to, um, to dive into it more and to provide some recommendations. Among those recommendations was that we uh, create a permanent committee of the board, the uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion subcommittee of the board, and that we um, work with a consultant to help identify uh, areas of need and how to work move forward on those. And areas of need both within our staff operations, within our membership operations, and in thinking about the, the workforce as a whole, the water workforce as a whole. Uh, both of those things are being done and underway, and I'm you know, really excited about that. And for me personally, as, as board president, I've worked hard to make sure that anytime I have an opportunity to make committee assignments or other kinds of um, appointments, that I've reached beyond just the circle of people that I know to make sure that I'm um, uh, being as inclusive as possible in, in those appointments. And so that's been really fun. I've gotten to know all kinds of great people among our membership who have so much to offer, but um, I might have overlooked if I hadn't been intentional about that. Uh, next slide, please. And perhaps our most visible program uh, in the sort of theme of diversity has been our inflow program. Inflow was established in 2018, the year that we first established goals around uh, DEI. And uh, we intentionally reached out to historically Black colleges and universities and other schools of higher education that have a d diverse student body who may not have been thinking about their opportunities in the water sector and didn't have connections with us. And that has been an incredibly rich relationship as that has developed over the years. Many of the students coming out of that, uh, that program have are now are now working in the sector. Some of them are appointees to committees that, that I've been um, had the pleasure to, to add them to, and they're just bringing a, a really uh, a, a real richness to to WEF and our, our work. And I think we're very grateful for it. I'll also point out the Water Leadership Institute, which is for people a little further along in their career, but it's a very intentionally diverse group of people that also are forming the foundation for new leadership at WEF. And both of these things give me so much hope for the future of, um, of where we're going, uh, the, the future of where we're going, that rather redundant, right? But for our future. Uh, next slide, please. 
Now, in contrast, this slide looks a little different. And I'm including it here for two reasons. For one, it's about WEF Tech. And uh, WEF Tech is, of course, WEF's signature event. I never give a talk without mentioning WEF Tech. We are all systems go for an in person WEF Tech in October 2021 uh, in Chicago. We are trying to figure out the balance between how to incorporate some of the wonderful things from the WEF Tech Connect, the virtual WEF Tech that we had last year, and how to, how to hold on to some of that while also having the in-person um, event that allows us to really be with each other and also to kind of touch and feel some of that equipment that we really need to get to know and that our members uh, value WEF Tech for. So we're trying to figure out that balance. And I want to make sure that, of course, I say I make a plug about WEF Tech. But I'm also, in this particular context, really struck by the photo there. It's sort of a, a where's Waldo opportunity. Uh, can you find a woman in that picture? Uh, she's there, at least I found one woman and sort of the corner of another one, but um, it's gotta work pretty hard to find her out there. And I don't know that it's even worth looking for a person of color in this picture. Uh, <laughs> maybe they're there, but I, I worked pretty hard and didn't, didn't find anybody. And so I asked Travis Loop, who is our WEF communications director, when this photo was from. And he said, I hate to tell you this, but I think it's kind of recent. I'll go, I'll go look. And um, so I guess my hope is that our future WEF techs have um, uh, literally a bit more color on the, the floor. And uh, I, I mentioned this to Travis and he said, well, make sure to say at, at, um, with the PNCWA event, make sure to tell everybody, bring a friend that doesn't, that doesn't look like you. But of course, most of you attending today are, are women, I think. And uh, if you come, that in itself will, uh, will help change the way that that exhibit floor looks. Um, okay, let's, uh, uh, let's close out the slides and I'll just I'll kind of wrap up my comments with some more uh, being able to kind of just talk directly to you without the slides. You know, for me, it's not that women are more special than men or better than men. And it's not just about gender, at least, at least not for me. But it is about diversity in all its dimensions. I truly believe in my heart of hearts, I know that we are stronger and we come up with better solutions when we involve people from a wide variety of life experiences. And if anyone questions why this is a good thing, I like to use the metaphor of a mangrove thicket. You know, mangroves protect shorelines from hurricanes and tsunamis and tidal surges and that sort of thing. Um, and, you know, how do they do it? Well, they do it with multiple prop roots. They have lots of means of support. If they had only one stem or one root, that tsunami would just knock them down when it came along. But with multiple props, they can stand strong against adversity. The key is that multiple sources of support. Now, I don't need to tell you that our world is facing colossal challenges. The, um, and like the mangrove, we need all the prop roots we can get to help us find uh, robust, resilient, culturally appropriate, affordable, all those kinds of things, solutions. The pandemic has helped us develop new ways of working together and new ways to share information. From what I can see, allowing us to work without the burden of travel has opened the door for having more types of people at the table. And, and this is a good thing. I've long admired the innovations coming out of the Pacific Northwest nature-based solutions, resource recovery, living buildings, eco-districts, green stormwater infrastructure, and I'm sure there's plenty more. These have all been pioneered in your region. And you've also been out front welcoming and promoting women in the sector. I know for a fact that you've been a leader among the management associations at WEF and that your work on diversity overall has inspired others to, uh, to um, take steps. And it's prompted uh, important and sometimes challenging conversations within WEF. And for that, I, uh, um, um, I appreciate it and I admire it. So thank you very much for that. 
And so with that, I'm just going to simply close by um, saying thank you for this invitation to join you. And I hope that that uh, you have a, a great day at, at uh, the, the different sessions that you go to and the people that you meet. And I just I hope that you have some fun and that you experience something that's a little provocative as well. So with that, thank you very much. And I happily turn it over to the next uh, speaker. Lynn, thank you so much for coming out and joining us today. I know that I'm personally excited to hear about WEF's leadership and initiatives for diversity and excited to be part of the change for the future. Um, I would also like to thank PNCWA for all its support with our new subcommittee on racial and social justice and our Women of Water, our conference networking events, and our Women of the Year Award. So we've got a great association that's here behind us. I look forward to seeing you all at Boise when we can meet face to face and have, um, have an opportunity to network and share um, all the exciting things that have happened in the past year. So we're gonna take a short break for a few minutes. I hope you all can go get a beverage, stretch your legs. Please go over to your navigation bar, go down and select the next session and Amy will be there waiting for you. Thank you everyone. <laughs>